In spite of dwindling sales caused by the ever-rising popularity of crossovers, Honda remains committed to the midsize sedan segment with the 2023 Accord. However, a hybrid-intensive model lineup, thoroughly updated interior technology, and mature new design ensure that the popular four-door isn't resting on its laurels. We'll get behind the wheel in just a minute, but before we do, please be sure to subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel and find us on all of your favorite social media, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook using the handle at MotorOne.com. And you can read the full review of the 2023 Honda Accord at the link in the description. We covered the design of the 2023 Accord in detail when we got our first look at it late last year. So if you wanna know more of my thoughts, you can go ahead and check out that video right here. However, let me just give you some broad strokes. This is a simple design. It doesn't necessarily push the boundaries too much. It's not polarizing like the old Accord's big front grille was. Instead, it's just kind of cleanly adorned, very handsome, maybe a little bit basic for some people who want something with a little bit more flash. However, there are a few features that I absolutely love. This particular sport model has a gloss black lip spoiler, but if you go for something like the EXL or the Touring, the trunk lid punctuates in this beautiful little ducktail that is just fantastic, I love it. And then there are the tail lights, which is just a big, wide, narrow strip that looks somehow just a little bit retro, and the tiny little emblem in between them is a big departure. Usually you see these massive word marks or something like it to kind of denote a vehicle's provenance, Honda went the opposite direction, they're going understated, and that really describes the entire vehicle overall. Every 2023 Accord, including the base level LX, comes standard with a 10.2 inch digital instrument cluster that offers tons of customizability, both in function and appearance. It's great to see Honda making sure the digital instrument cluster is more than just some fancy showpiece, it actually improves the way that you interact with the vehicle. The same can also be said of the 12.3 inch touchscreen that comes standard on all hybrid models. Non-hybrids get a seven inch touchscreen. It's pretty easy to use and it has standard wireless CarPlay, which is a huge level up from infotainment systems of the past. Furthermore, the top spec touring model comes standard with Google Automotive, which means Google Maps, the Play Store, and Google Assistant all built in. This particular car doesn't have that. And if you wanna learn more about how it works, you can check out our first look video. The slightly conservative exterior redesign aside, the Accord is pretty wholly improved compared to the previous generation, and that is most obvious when you step inside this restyled new cabin. Now, some people might say that the design elements borrowed from the Civic might make it look a little bit more downmarket. I don't think that we can really complain that much because the design is so good in the Civic that why wouldn't Honda want to use it every chance they could? And it works really well in the Accord too. This feels like a nice, premium, attractive interior, especially when it comes down to using the switch gear. These little metal knobs that adjust the climate controls are fantastic. They feel so good and their action is delightful. <laughs> that attractive design is rendered in some pretty decent materials, at least if you're going for the flagship touring model. That model gets a padded center console so your knee isn't constantly bumping up against hard plastic. And the materials on the rear door panels are improved as well so that they better match the front door panels. However, if you step down the trim walk into this model, for example, this is a sport, you lose some of that padding. This is a hard plastic center console and the upper doors in the rear seats are hard plastic as well. Getting beyond that, the rest of the interior is pretty comfortable. The driver's seat at least has lots of power adjustability on this model, so I have no trouble finding a good seating position. And the adjustable lumbar support is nice as well. The passenger gets a bit of a short shift. They only get a four-way power adjustable seat, so there's no height adjustment on the passenger side, nor is there adjustable lumbar support. You have no such problems in the back. This is probably one of the most spacious vehicles on the market. I had no trouble getting back there and sitting behind myself completely comfortably. Cargo space is also perfectly adequate. We've got tons of camera equipment and luggage in the back, and there's room for more, so I wouldn't be surprised if you could take a family of four on a nice long weekend vacation. Now, once you've packed up and settled in, it's time to actually start driving the thing. And that's when you're gonna experience the most significant departure of this Accord from its previous generation, possibly in history. That's because every trim level, except the lower LX and EX models, is now a hybrid. In place of the 1.5 liter turbocharged four that you get in the LX and EX, the Sport, EXL, Sport L, and Touring trims now get a two motor hybrid system. Honda hopes that its buyers won't miss the two liter turbocharged four cylinder because the new hybrid is more powerful and torquier than it was before, up to 204 horsepower and 247 pound-feet of torque. Also, somewhat curiously, the gas engine very rarely directly powers the wheels. In 99% of your driving situations, the engine spins a generator motor, which generates electricity for the battery, which then sends power to a traction motor 
that goes to the front wheels. It sounds a little bit complicated, but it's actually a simpler design than a typical hybrid system with a continuously variable transmission, and the net result is better efficiency and better response, according to Honda. Once you get past all that engineering techno babble and actually put the Accord on the road, you're greeted with a driving experience that's perfectly adequate. I'm not going to tell you that the hybrid is a good replacement for the 2.0-liter turbo because it just isn't. That was a much more exciting powertrain, whether you got it with the 6-speed manual that's no longer offered or the 10-speed automatic. It was thrilling, it was genuinely fun to drive, and it felt a little bit like a larger, more spacious Civic Type R you do not get that experience in the Accord Hybrid. Instead, with the Accord Hybrid, you get a driving experience that's less enthusiastic and more competent. It's perfectly capable of keeping up with traffic on the freeway, and if you need to execute a pass on a two-lane road around slow-moving traffic, you can do that too. But it's not necessarily thrilling and exciting. I suspect most buyers of the Accord won't really care, especially considering that the hybrid system feels just as refined as a 1.5 liter turbo in lesser Accords. If I have a genuine complaint about the hybrid, it's that the electric motor can't really drive the car very fast before the gas engine fires up. The battery on the Accord is pretty small, which to its credit means that it recharges really, really quickly, like when you're slowing down for a stoplight or coasting down a hill. But the downside to that is it discharges just as quickly when you start up when the light turns green. You can probably only get three or four city blocks before the gas engine fires up and takes over to both charge the battery and power that traction motor that sends power to the wheels. In that respect, I really think Honda would do well to offer a plug-in hybrid version of this vehicle that gives you some genuine long distance capability on fully electric power. It'd be great if you could even go 10 or 20 miles without firing up the gas engine, but that's just not what hybrids are designed for. Instead, this vehicle reduces greenhouse gas emissions because you don't have to run the engine when you're starting from a dead stop and it kind of helps everything run a little bit more efficiently overall. And you do see the net results of that. Right now, in some pretty aggressive driving, we're averaging an easy 35 miles per gallon, and the car is rated up to 46 city, 41 highway, and 44 combined. Now, speaking of enthusiastic driving, that's one area that Honda did not fix what wasn't broken. Body control's fantastic, and there's really not very much body roll when you're pushing it through a corner. The steering is undeniably numb, but it's still quick enough and accurate enough to be fun to drive on a road like this. Honda includes a few different drive modes that do indeed have a genuine impact on how the car feels driving down the road. For example, in Econ, you have a pretty darn lazy throttle that has a genuine benefit on fuel efficiency, whereas when you toggle over into Sport, that throttle becomes a little bit sharper and a little bit more exciting. The gasoline engine stays on a little bit more so that you have maximum power at all times and the steering gets pleasantly firm. One feature I genuinely like about the new Accord is the driver's selectable brake regen. Honda gives you these two little paddles behind the steering wheel, but since there isn't a conventional transmission, they're obviously not there to change gears. Instead, they let you dial in the exact amount of drag you want coming from the generator to recharge the battery. When you're coasting down the freeway, you leave the thing completely off and you're able to take your foot off the accelerator and get just a little bit lazy and just kind of relax and enjoy the drive. But then when you approach a corner or a stoplight, you can use the minus sign paddle to give yourself a little bit more regen through, I think, seven different steps. Let's be totally honest though. Most people shopping for a midsize sedan aren't terribly interested in how enthusiastically it drives down a twisty road. So let's get in just a little bit and talk about noise and ride comfort. Now on the latter front, the new Accord does a pretty good job of soaking up bad pavement. It's firmly damp for sure, but it never feels particularly harsh. You kind of just hit bumps with a little thump and you're on your way. And that's definitely a good thing. It doesn't feel slushy, it doesn't feel out of control. It kind of just feels commanding and buttoned down, which is great. However, I have to say that there's a little bit more road noise than I'd like in a family sedan. That could be due to the standard 19-inch wheels that come on every trim level except the LX, the EX, and the EXL, but it's still kind of a bummer. It just means that you get a little bit more grittiness than you'd expect. It might be better if this car is loaded down with passengers and cargo. That might kind of help dull some of the noise, but on a long trip all by yourself, it could get a little bit grating. The other big NVH problem I have with the new Accord is something that I actually first noticed when I drove the CRV hybrid. When you're driving down a long hill, the generator is connected to the battery and it's charging things up. But since the battery is relatively small, it recharges really, really quickly and can't accept any more electricity. But instead of just disengaging the generator and letting the car run away from you, in order to keep things consistent, Honda connects the engine to the generator and activates it as like a vacuum pump. There's no spark, there's no fuel, the engine's just turning to provide some engine braking. 
That all sounds well and good, and it does save you wear and tear on your brakes, but the issue is, all of a sudden, you get all this racket coming from under the hood, even though the car is still technically operating as an EV. There's no fuel being burnt. So it's just kind of a little bit confusing and a little bit surprising. You do get used to it. It doesn't ruin your day and make the experience awful, but it's just a little bit unusual, and it's something that the first few times it happens, you're not going to understand what's going on. Now, as with most of its models, Honda made sure to give the new Accord a full complement of active safety and driver assistance technology standard. The Honda Sensing Suite is included on all trim levels, and it comes with features like adaptive cruise control, automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane departure prevention, and lane centering technology. Now, if you go for one of the upmarket models, starting at, I think, the Sport, you also get blind spot monitoring standard. So no matter where you look, you've got a sensor looking out for you and making sure you're not getting into trouble. The 2023 Honda Accord starts at $28,390 for a base LX 1.5T model. However, if you do want to step into the hybrid, you're looking at a bare minimum of $32,990 for the Sport model. And then at the very top of the range is the Hybrid Touring, which starts at $38,985. Now, if you're keeping track, at the very low end, the new Accord is a little bit more expensive than the vehicle it replaces. But the flagship model is actually a little bit cheaper than last year's flagship, which included the 2.0 turbocharged engine. Somewhere in the middle is the Sport L that I drove, which, including destination and a beautiful coat of radiant red paint, cost just over $35,000. That money will get you a lot of very compelling options among the Accord's primary competitors. For example, I love the Hyundai Sonata, which offers tons of practicality and efficiency if you go for the hybrid, or if you're one of the people who's going to miss the performance of the Accord 2.0T, you can jump into the Sonata N-Line, which is genuinely fun to drive no matter what you're doing. Even so, almost nothing else in the class captures the Accord's blend of blue chip reliability and reputation, impressive passenger space, and a solid mix of technology. Is this the family sedan reinvented? Well, to be honest, no. The efficient hybrid powertrain has good enough performance for most daily driving tasks, and the handsome styling isn't gonna turn anyone off. Furthermore, the comfortable ride and sporty handling are a very pleasant surprise in something that doesn't wear a performance badge. Yes, the departure of the 2.0 turbo is indeed a bummer, but the 2023 Accord still ticks enough boxes to keep most of its loyal customers happy. Thanks for watching.